Easy Reading Edition 10. Remember, do not forget. Sabbath, November 27. Read for this week's lesson, Genesis 9, verses 8 to 17, Deuteronomy 4, verses 32 to 39, Deuteronomy 4, verse 9 and 23, Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 to 18. Memory verse, remember how you made the Lord your God angry in the desert. Never forget that. From the day you left the land of Egypt to the day you came to this place, you have refused to obey the Lord. Deuteronomy 9 verse 7. Two words are written in the Bible again and again, remember and forget. Both words show us something that happens in our minds. Both words are verbs. They also are completely different from each other. To remember means we do not forget. To forget means we do not remember. God often tells his people to remember everything he does for them. God asks his people to remember his mercy and that he is nice and good to his people. The Old Testament is filled with warnings from special messengers. They tell the Hebrew people not to forget the special work God gave them to do. Remembering God and his work is important. That is why the psalm writer Asaph says, Lord, I remember that you have done. I remember the amazing things you did long ago. Psalm 77 verse 11. Are you remembering the Lord? and not forgetting his works any less important for us today? Of course, they are important, both for us as persons and as a whole church. This week, we will look at this moment, Bible truth, in Deuteronomy. We will see why we should remember God and not forget his work in our lives. Sunday, November 28, Remembering the Rainbow Genesis 9 verses 8 to 17. When is the first time we see the word remember in the Bible? The answer is Genesis 9. After the worldwide flood, the Lord tells Noah that he will put his rainbow in the sky. The rainbow is proof of the agreement God makes with Noah. God will not destroy the earth again with water. Read Genesis 9 verses 8 to 17. How is the word remember used in these verses? How does this meaning help us understand why we should remember everything the Lord does for us? Of course, God does not need the rainbow to remember his promise and agreement. God wants to communicate in language that humans can understand. So God gives people the rainbow to help them remember his promise. Each time his people see the rainbow, they will remember that God judged the people on earth for their sins. The people also will remember God promised not to flood the earth again. So Genesis 9 shows us three important things to remember about God. We must remember 1. The promises of God 2. His warnings and number 3. His work on this earth. The rainbow in the sky is just as important for us today. Many scientists do not accept the flood. These scientists say that the laws of nature show that a worldwide flood never happened. Many people had the same trust in the laws of nature before the flood came. They said that the laws of nature were stronger than God, so they taught that a worldwide flood was not possible. Ellen G. White wrote about the wise men from that time. These men argued that the laws of nature cannot be broken. God himself cannot change them. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 97, adapted. So in short, before the flood, people said that a flood never would come because of the laws of nature. After the flood, the people say that because of these same laws of nature, the flood never happened at all. But God told us in the Bible about the flood. He gave people a promise 
that he will not destroy the earth again with water. He wrote that promise across the sky in beautiful colors. If we remember what the rainbow means, we know we can trust the Bible. So why not trust God to keep all his other promises in the Bible too? Next time you see a rainbow, think about the promises of God. How can we learn to trust all of his promises? Monday, November 29. Look at the past. Deuteronomy 4 verses 32 to 39. In Deuteronomy 4, we read the powerful warnings God gives to his people. God warns his people not to break his agreement. If they do, they will lose the blessings he gave them as his special people. So they must stay loyal to God. What will help the people stay loyal? Obedience to God and remembering the love he showed them in the past. Moses tells the people to remember that God saved them from Egypt by his power and strength. You saw the troubles that tested, showed what was in the hearts of the people. You saw miracles and wonders. You saw war and the terrible, surprising things that happened. Deuteronomy 4 verse 34. For sure, God did many wonderful things for his people. He also did these things in a powerful way to help his people never to forget everything he did for them. Read Deuteronomy 4 verses 32 to 39. What does the Lord tell his people to remember? Why is it so important that they remember these things? Moses asked the people to look at the past. Can they see a time when God did for anyone else what he did for them? Not at all. Moses wants the people to study history to see how much the Lord did for them. Then they will feel grateful and thankful for his mighty acts in their lives. What was one of the most important acts God did for his people? He freed them from Egypt. More surprising than that, God talked with them at Sinai. There, Moses says, He let you see his great, mighty far, and he spoke to you from it. Deuteronomy 4 verse 36. Read Deuteronomy 4 verse 40. What does Moses want the people to understand in this verse about everything God has done for them? God freed his people from Egypt. Now they are about to enter the promised land. God kept his part of this agreement. Now the people must do their part. What is their part? They must obey God. How does this agreement show the new agreement God makes us with us in the New Testament? What did Jesus do for us? What should we give to him? Read Revelation 14 verse 12. Tuesday, November 30. Be careful. Do not forget. Deuteronomy 4 verses 9 and 23. Read Deuteronomy 4 verses 9 and 23. In these verses, what does the Lord tell his people to do? Why is this warning so important for his people? Two verbs get our attention right away in both verses. Be careful and do not forget. What is the Lord really saying to his people here? Do not forget what I have done for you. Do not forget the agreement I made with you. The verb be careful comes from the Hebrew word SMR. We also see SMR used in Deuteronomy 4 verse 9, where it means keep watch over your life. SMR is used all through the Old Testament. It means to keep, to watch, to guard, or to protect. When is the first time in the Bible that SMR is written in the Hebrew language? The first time is before sin ever happened. 
God tells Adam to take care of the garden he gave him. Genesis 2 verse 15. In Genesis Deuteronomy 4, the Lord tells each of his people to be careful not to forget. God is not warning his people about not losing their memory. God wants his people not to forget his agreement. The people must not become lazy. They always must remember who they are. They also must remember how God wants them to live in front of other Hebrews, strangers, and the people from the countries around them. Read again Deuteronomy 4 verse 9. Read also Deuteronomy 6 verse 7 and Deuteronomy 11 verse 19. Look at the last part. Moses talks to the people about teaching their children and grandchildren about everything God did in the past for them. How will doing that help the people remember? For sure, the future children of Israel needed to know about everything God did for his people in the past. At the same time, the people who tell the stories again and again get a blessing too. This experience helps them always to remember all the wonderful things God has done for them. Have you told other people the story about all the wonderful things the Lord did for you? If yes, how has this experience helped them? How has telling your story helped you remember the way the Lord led you in the past? Wednesday, December 1. When you have eaten and are full. Deuteronomy 8 verses 7 to 18. Read Deuteronomy 8 verses 7 to 18. In these verses, what does the Lord warn his people about? Why is this warning important for us today too? Look at all the blessings the people will get if they obey God. God will give them a wonderful and rich land. There you will have plenty of food and everything you need. Deuteronomy 8 verse 9 God also will bless his people with so much more. God will give his people flocks, gold, silver, and beautiful houses. The Lord will give the Israelites everything good in this life and a lot of it. But then what? The people of God will be in danger. Everyone who gets riches in this life will face this danger. The Israelites will be in danger of forgetting that the Lord is the reason they have power, skill, to become rich by this blessing, he may keep his agreement which he promised to your fathers. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 Maybe their forgetting will not happen right away, but as the years go by, the people will forget their past. They will have all the comforts in life they need, so they will forget how the Lord led them through the big desert you saw, which fills people with fear. Deuteronomy 1 verse 19. They will think that their own smartness and talents made them a success. God warns them not to let this bad thing happen. But as we see later in the Bible, the people do the very thing that God warns them not to do. So during the time when the people are a success, Moses warns them to remember that the Lord is the only reason for their success. Moses warns the people not to be tricked by the blessings God gave them. Hundreds of years later, Jesus will give the same warning as Moses about riches. We see this warning in the picture story Jesus tells about the man who plants seeds. Jesus warns us not to be tricked by a love for riches. Mark 4 verse 19. Maybe some of us have a lot of money and many beautiful things in this life. Whatever we have, we must remember, we will all die someday unless Jesus comes back first. What should this Bible truth tell us about the dangers that riches bring? How can riches make us forget our need of Jesus? Who can save us from death? 
Thursday, December 2. Remember that you were a slave. Deuteronomy 5 verse 15. Read Deuteronomy 5 verse 15. Deuteronomy 6 verse 12. Deuteronomy 15 verse 15. Deuteronomy 16 verses 3 and 12. And Deuteronomy 24 verses 18 and 22. In these verses, what does the Lord want his people never to forget? All through the Old Testament, the Lord wants his people to remember that he freed them from Egypt. To this day, many Jews celebrate this time, named the Passover. As Moses tells the people, you must remember to do this even when you go to the land the Lord is giving you. When your children ask you, why are we doing keeping this ceremony, holiday, you will say, this Passover is to honor the Lord because when we were in Egypt, he passed over the houses of Israel. He killed the Egyptians, but he saved the people in our houses. Exodus 12 verses 25 to 27. Today, the Passover shows us how we are saved. As Paul explains, let us then remember the feast of Passover and have our bread, but let us not have our feast with all yeast in the bread. To do bad and wrong things is like the same as that old yeast, but let us have it with new bread that has no old yeast in it. To be honest and true, loyal, is like the new bread, 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7. Read Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 13. In these verses, what does Paul tell the non-Jewish Christians to remember? How do these verses show us the same thing that Moses in Deuteronomy wants the Hebrews to remember? Paul wants the Ephesians to remember that God saved them from sin. God forgave the Ephesians and showed them his mercy. Now these Christians have many rich blessings, but Paul tells the Ephesians they have nothing to brag about. Their good behavior did not earn them the favor of God. This favor is a gift. Whoever we are, we are always must remember what God did for us in Jesus. These words can help us to do that. Spend an hour each day thinking about the life of Jesus. Make a picture in your mind of each part of his life. Most of all, think about the closing moments of his life. When you think about the death of Jesus for you on the cross, your trust in God will grow stronger. Your love will grow deeper. Then you will be filled more deeply with his love. Ellen G. White the Desire of Ages, page 83, Adapted. Friday, December 3. Additional Thought God put the beautiful rainbow in the clouds. God came down to our level when He gave us this gift. He wanted to show us sinners just how much He loved us. So He put the rainbow in the sky as proof of his agreement with humans. The Lord announces that he will do when he sees the rainbow. He will remember his agreement. Does this announcement show us that God will forget his promise sometimes? Not at all. God communicates to us in words that help us to understand him better. God had a plan for the rainbow. In the future, the children and grandchildren of his people will see the rainbow. Then they will ask their parents about it. Their parents should then tell their children the story about the flood. They should tell their children that God Most High bent the rainbows and put it in the clouds. The rainbow was a promise. It showed humans that God will never again drown the earth in water. So, from then on, the rainbow always will show the love that God has for the human family. This love will cause humans to trust God more deeply. Ellen G. White, 
Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 106-107, adopted. Discussion questions. Number one, how do riches and success change our spiritual life? What are ways we can protect ourselves from some of the spiritual dangers that come from money and owning a lot of stuff? Number two, in class, talk about the final moments in the life of Jesus. What do these moments show us about the love of God for us? Why must we never forget how much God loves us? What other things can you think of that show that God is good and loves us so much? Why should we always keep these things in our minds? Number three, some scientists say there were, was no worldwide flood. Other scientists say God did not make the earth. The Bible tells us that both of these things happened. Plus the Sabbath also shows us that God made the earth and sky in six days. What do the ideas of these modern scientists show us about how powerful and dangerous our ways of life, thinking, beliefs, and ideas can be when they do not come from the Bible.